This video will walk you through the process of using Microsoft Word to create lines in a graph and to label quadrants in a graph for this assignment. And I'll also discuss the rationale behind the proportion of correct decisions so that you'll have a better understanding of the reasoning that this is a good method to identify how useful a particular selection test or interview is for identifying who's going to be a good performer and a poor performer at work. So first things first, let me show you how to use Microsoft Word to put lines and labels for quadrants in this graph. And the first thing I want to mention is the reason that we're doing this is we want to separate those who are going to have a passing interview score from those who don't and separate those who have a passing performance appraisal score from those who do not. So the first thing I want to show you how to do is to put the vertical line in your graph that separates those who have an interview score of 8 or higher from those who do not. So you go up to the Insert tab in Microsoft Word, go to Shapes, so click Shapes, find the line, and then you'll just draw a vertical line right at that 8. So like right about here. And I'm going to go ahead and scoot this over, so just click it and drag it, so that the people that have an 8 or higher on the interview question score are to the right of the line, and the people who have lower than 8 are to the left. Now let's draw another line. Now, I'm going to straighten this out, make it nice and pretty. Now once you have already done this, you may already have the option available to you right here, so you can just click the line and do it. But if not, I'll show you again. You just go to the Insert tab, Shapes, select the line, and if you look down here, you'll see that for the performance appraisal, you need to have a score of 6.5 or higher to be considered a successful employee. So 6.5 for the performance appraisal score is right about here. So we're going to draw the horizontal line. So now we've separated this into four quadrants, and I'll show you how to label those quadrants. So the explanation of the labeling the quadrants is right here, but I'll show you how to do it. And I do expect to see this performed in Microsoft Word. It's good to learn how to do these things, even beyond doing this assignment. So you can click just right here on Draw Text Box if this option is already shown, but if not, you can just go to Insert, then you can select Text Box, and then Draw Text Box. So I'm going to start with Quadrant 1, because this is going to be Quadrant 1, Quadrant 2, Quadrant 3, and Quadrant 4. So I'm just going to draw a decent sized text box and label it Quadrant 1. I'm using Roman numerals here. If you want to just use a regular number, that's fine. But if you'll look below, you'll see that I use Roman numerals down here. Just because I don't want to get the numbers you're using confused with the labels for the quadrants. All right, so Quadrant 1. Okay, now I'm going to do it again my text box. This is quadrant 2, II in Roman numerals. My next text box for quadrant 3, III in Roman numerals. And then my last quadrant 4, which is IV in Roman numerals. Okay, so I've got my quadrants labeled, and let me explain what these quadrants represent. So this quadrant one, this represents the individuals who scored poorly on the interview questions. They didn't meet the minimum passing standard. They're below eight, but they had a pretty high performance appraisal score. So what this would represent is a predictive failure of the interview question because if we were using the interview questions as hiring criteria we would not have hired these people they didn't meet the minimum standard of the interview but they had really high performance so in this example we're using current employees so we have access to their performance appraisal score and we're just asking them these questions to see how well those questions would predict performance if we use these in the future for people who aren't employees yet but who want to be employees so, judging by this, we would have three individuals who wouldn't have made the final cut based on the interview questions, but would be good performers. So that's not good. That means that our interview didn't do a good job at predicting the performance in this case. 
next quadrant, quadrant two. This represents a predictive success. So the individuals in this quadrant scored high enough on the interview to have been hired if it was used to hire them. And they had high levels of performance, successful employees. So in this case, the interview question predicted that they would be good performers if they scored well on in the interview. Quadrant three, this represents a predictive failure because they scored high enough on the interview to have been considered for employment, but if we would have used this as a selection tool, they would have been hired, but they had below standard performance. So they are meeting the standard according to the interview, but it's not predicting their performance because although they met the standard for the interview, their performance was not very good. Now quadrant four, this represents a predictive success in that they didn't meet the minimum standard for the interview, so they wouldn't have been hired if we were using this interview as the hiring criteria for these employees. And guess what? They had substandard performance. So in this case, poor scores on the interview predicted poor performance, and we could have avoided hiring these poor performers if the interview was being used for selection. So when you go down and you look at these formulas, this first one is looking at the proportion of correct decisions. So the correct acceptances, those who did well in the interview and had high performance, and the correct rejections, so the number of people that did poorly on the interview and had poor performance. So you want to take those, add them together, divide it by the total number of employees, which is 20 employees. You'll see that up here. It says, hey, there's 20 employees in this data set. You can also find that by counting the number of dots, which represent the number of people in this data set. So each row represents one person. You'll see 20 rows here corresponds to 20 dots in the scatter plot. So when you find this proportion, you will know the proportion of correct decisions. And if proportions are tricky for you, you can multiply that number by 100. It would tell you the percent of correct decisions. Then in number three, you're going to look at the baseline proportion of correct decisions. So you're going to look at just the successful employees, so the people who meet the standards of performance, divided by the total number of employees to see what is the proportion of employees that are successful performers based on the current selection criteria that was used to hire them in the first place. Just like the proportion number two, you could multiply that number by 100. It would tell you the percentage of successful employees using the current selection criteria. Now what you want to do is compare the proportion that we would have using the interview to the current proportion in hopes that this is higher, the proportion from number two, that you're going to have a better success rate. You're going to be predicting performance better with the interview questions than you are currently. And if that's the case, then you'd want to start using the interview as a predictor of performance because it's going to be a more accurate gauge of who's going to be a successful performer, who's going to be a poor performer compared to what you're doing currently. So I hope this video helped you a lot and I hope you've learned something about how to manipulate tables in, or sorry, graphs in Microsoft Word and how the proportion of correct decisions can be a useful tool for determining whether or not you should use a particular selection tool or interview question.